happen. So today we have a very interesting topic for all of us. Something that you no, know, which uh, which is a big concern to us. And uh, I have a very special guest who is going to just join me in a moment. Ask him to join me. The moment he comes in, and then you want to have some great fun understanding something which concerns all of us. Good afternoon, Tushar. How are you? Hi, Saket. So good to see hey. you. Hey, hi, Tapan. Yeah. Yeah. So all so the good way to from see you. US. Yeah, what's the time there right now? No, no, no. I'm locked down in India, Tapan. I'm based in California, in Palo Alto. But I yeah. made sure I'm locked down in India. I can say it's one of those rare times we can say being in India is much safer than being in the US. <laughs> that is actually very, very interesting. Yes, all the news that we hear actually got me very worried. And since I know that you are yeah. mostly out of US. I was seriously yes, very, yes. very worried, um, so I So, but good to have you here in India. Now, for all my uh, viewers, you would be happy to know that today the topic is uh, cyber, you know, cyber crime. And you'll be surprised to know that um, a, a cyber crime has become more lucrative than drugs, you know, today in the world. That is how it is. You'll also be surprised to know that while we talk, you no, know, one third of you would actually be getting attacked, you no, know, somewhere or something would be happening. To your system, it is that that dangerous. And I have with me a, a good friend whom I actually say is a genius. You no, know? do you think of doing a startup while you're trying to finish your engineering, like in the last year engineering? And Saket did that. He set up his own uh, company, you no, know, in the year 2012. And then obviously, when you set up a company that young and make it big, you all in all the list, be it Forbes or be it you no, know, whatever you call it, Fortune or Entrepreneurs Magazine. Uh, under 40, under 30, whatever you can think of. Imagine Saket has been there and done that, you no? Know? And set up his company in Silicon Valley, going from the start of the retail. An expert in cyber, one of the rare experts at such a young age who understands very well. In fact, I should think that people who are millennials would actually be very, very careful of cyber attacks and they may not be getting attacked at all. You no, know, it is people like us who don't understand tech very well who may be getting attacked. But I was surprised to see that half of millennials actually have had a cyber attack, you know, when I look at statistics. And let me give an, an interesting story before I start asking Sake some questions, make it interesting for all of you to hear what all is happening in the world. Uh, way back, my father, and actually my father is more um, tech savvy, and my younger daughter, I think the family, these two are the ones who really know how to you know, uh, play around with tech and get all the things done. He had a cyber attack, and he lost some uh, money uh, not uh, much, but about 20, 30,000 rupees uh, in, uh, for some uh, firm in US is where he got attacked and he's in India. And that's the time I started thinking the risks have changed. You know, uh, we, we used to only think of pickpocketing a risk, but today cyber is a big risk. And for the first time in the country, we bought in retail cyber cover that time. And that was the reason. But then after being that cover, I realized that still people aren't very aware what's happening. And today when lockdown is there, work from home has become prevalent. All our financial transactions are happening on mobile. Are we aware what kind of huge risks are we sitting on? No. So without much ado, let me get Saket into the conversation. Let me ask him, Saket, what is it that surprises you? No, you have into the cyber stuff and giving protection to all the Fortune 500 companies across the world. No, but as an individual, what is that surprises you about cyber? And what do you think really worries you at an individual level? I'd like to hear from you. And tell us something interesting that you've heard or seen in your career as you moved up trying to protect companies and people. <laughs> Tapan, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. It's truly an honor to be there in the same frame with you. Uh, I'm, I, I, I've been very lucky in my life, and that's the reason why some good things have happened. But young people like me only get to where they are with guidance from the veterans like yourself. So thank you so much for the opportunity, and it's truly an honor to do this Instagram live with you. Moving to your question, Stefan, in terms of, uh, uh, I've been in this space for almost a decade now. Uh, I'm still 29, so I started taking my, <laughs> I started taking my training and workshops on cybersecurity uh, from the first year of my engineering college, back when I was 19 years of age. And uh, I would say, I would say, without the surprise of most people, cyber has changed quite a lot, right? If I, because cybersecurity is a function of cyber, right? So if I were to just give that journey of cyber, and you'll probably know this better than me, Tapan, is, you know, cyber used to be a back office automation tool 
in the late 90s right where it was all about how can you make an excel sheet get an erp get a print out and yeah things will be you know sorted and things around that right then in the early 2000s it suddenly became like okay this can also be used for business enablement you know that i can reach out to my customers from mobile i can go ahead and i can actually uh, you know use cyber to you know take my top line up or bottom line down and you know bottom line up and things around that so you know it was just it was it was a business enablement i think today we are at that space up and when you see the fortune 20 companies and see 60% of them are cyber companies where they don't use cyber or technology for business enablement but cyber is the business technology is the business that they are truly in right and 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 i would say that that whole transformation where now cyber or technology or digital has become the centerpiece of any organization or any business plan that you would make irrespective of any industry that you belong to is the key reason why cyber security has become one of the most important things which is today discussed in the board rooms according to world economic forum uh, of this year uh, tapan uh, cyber security is the number one uh, uh, man made uh, you know risk that that boards that senior leaders and ceos are worried around the world and 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 the change is really not much to do with cyber security but to do with cyber because now that it's become more and more popular and it's become the centerpiece of everything that we are doing uh breaching into that has very dire consequences to both our personal lives and our professional lives so that's what i've seen as a change uh, unfortunately we still don't we do, we're not equipped enough both from a not just from a technology perspective but also from a awareness training so the people process technology element right from all three vectors there is still some catch up to do to be able to go ahead and and actually come to a point where we can say that yes you know like today against fire uh, casualty that might be there or against you know any kind of a specific bre- uh, you know physical damage that would be there i think we've come enough far way where we know how to tackle those situations how do you mitigate those risks which are there cyber i think we are still far off the and again uh, that's my quick views around cyber and then cyber security how that's transforming Yeah, I think I see a comment from Satish. Um, he's saying Allianz Risk Barometer suggested cyber is the biggest risk. I think Satish, you're right. As an insurer, no, I think this is right. And and the problem of cyber is like you know the clogging in your heart. You don't know it till it's too late. You no, know, till you. I think that is what happens. It keeps on building up all this malware and all this phishing and all this. You no, know, and you don't know till it is very very late, which is there. And while uh, Sakesh spoke about uh, the journey of two uh, thousand. I was reminded in the '94, '95 circuit. I was an IT head. No, you'll be surprised to know. I knew DBS, Foxport too. Yeah, and wow. uh, we had DOS. Yeah, and Windows was just no <laughs> coming in. And I was super excited. I told my dad that I I I know IT and I really understand very well. And he laughed. He said, "In the '60s, we had IBM frame in the US." And he said, "I I used to punch cards to get my programming done. And used to punch so many cards in the programming, and that is how no." it happened so the journey i have seen but today i am completely lost in this journey you know initial three years i thought as an expert but i stopped telling that i know tech no about 10 years back i have just no clue how fast is moving and how things are moving no but let's say if i am an individual and i think i am very safe and secure i have my phone i am using all my digital payments and i am using my uh, ipads i am working from home what risk one am i putting myself at two i am putting my organization at no uh because of some uh, carelessness that i'll be doing what what do you think and have seen in this that is the biggest risk that a person does you know because if i look at data one in three uh, people know are fallen for this phishing um, uh, trap or at least they've clicked on the phishing email and got their system compromised so uh, what is it that you know you would um, suggest based on experience yeah you're absolutely right uh, upon in fact uh... i think especially the pre covid and the post covid era is a very clear demarcation in terms of uh, cyber breaches also as much as it is about physical breaches and physical security that that we can think of uh just in the last 3 months according to a report uh that came in from semantech the number of phishing emails and spams that have really shot up has been in the tune of almost 6000% right there are more than close to 15000 domain names which have been registered 
in the name of covid in the name of corona virus etc etc with a primary agenda of going ahead and duping people and doing fraud with people which are there uh to your point about what risk does an individual possess uh i think i think you know if i were to count those risks up and it will actually be a i i don't think we'll have enough time here i think the bigger risk that an individual possesses is not understanding and i don't want them to be an engineer but even understanding the fundamentals of how a computer works or an email works and, and 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 you know what happens when you click on a link and how deadly that can be unfortunately i still get people who come to me and tell me and really smart people who come and tell me that you know i can't be hacked because my phone has a fingerprint scanner and a hacker <laughs> can't get through because he doesn't have my fingerprint right it's and and again it's not their fault tapan because if you really think about it our education system i mean even today schools and colleges of course now not today because now everything is going online but right before this you know you actually had schools and colleges banning your cell phones banning your laptops because uh, you know because because how do you use it in a very responsible way was never something which was taught to us if you think about it tapan right yourself i mean you're using instagram right i can i i'm i'm there's a i mean you're obviously privileged where you might have your copcom team who might have told you the right things and the wrong things to do here but 99.9% of the people right they would learn how to use an instagram by actually downloading it and just doing a trial and error and and one thing there that they click on can actually be very fatal and remember we are loving, living in a in a time where jeff bezos the richest man on the planet and arguably one of the smartest people on the planet his private pictures were hacked from inside his cell phone without his knowledge and with all that he could do he he couldn't do anything about it right so i'm just trying to say that you know saying that look how how vulnerable you are and i'm not trying to scare anybody here i'm trying to give actual examples so that people understand that as huge of an opportunity is cyber which brings together i mean there are now almost 4 billion people on the internet i like saying this you know now the average distance between these 4 billion people is literally 20 milliseconds because that's the time you take to send an email from one person to the other right so 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 considering that is there uh i think unfortunately because we've never been trained in knowing how cyber works i think that's a much bigger worry than actually saying that look have an antivirus have a two factor authentication have a uh, you know firewall in place etc etc so 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 that is there more specifically i think from an individual perspective if i give you some stories around uh, you know i actually have this multiple things happening i think on an average we get a couple of these uh, reports every week from our customers or some senior executive from our customer saying they clicked on a link which said your billing will be stopped of netflix because there has been some issue on the billing side it's very natural right if you see a email which says billing at netflix.com by the way it's very easy to send an email from any email id in the world to any email id in the world that's how smtp works right the, you know so so if you get an email saying billing at netflix.com it said there is a payment issue and if you don't resolve it your account will be blocked very high odds that people will actually click on that and the moment you click there it asks you for your netflix username and password now you you give that out now on an average upon people because you need complex passwords these days in wherever websites you go you can't remember more than three complex passwords so therefore the password that you give out of netflix there's a high chance that you use that for your instagram or your facebook or your you know things around that so it becomes a very easy way by which you know somebody can intrude into you see the password go on to something else and then if they have an access to your email you can actually click on forgot passwords on all social media and get back the stuff which is there these kinds of frauds are very very popular these days tapan and something that uh, i think most people should definitely be very very wary about unbelievable i never thought so saket you get so many uh, messages uh, mails no and they look so authentic in fact we surprised to know that luckily my cfo and me we have been working together for so many years we actually get mails saying that no please transfer this money immediately from my id <laughs> you'd call me and say boss what's wrong like why do you want so much money suddenly transferred here i said what money he said no i just got a mail and this has happened once it's, it's a real story between us it has happened at least eight times in the past 4 years you know a mail comes to him from my id saying please transfer the money and then obviously my 
IT team already gets into a lot of you know, uh, work to figure out how and what can be done on that. But this is interesting, Netflix or no, people would, would fall for it very, very, like um, very easily. You know, I think that is something. But the learning, if I listen to what you were saying, would be that I should not put in my password for anything, you no, know, other than logging in into the device that I have. So at least that can be, you no know, one caution. If somebody asking for a password, I should immediately get very, very cautious about, you no, know, that uh, is it the right thing to do or not. Will that help in some way? Or do you think yeah, that... Yeah. You're right, Tapan. The unfortunate part is that, so so let's take your own example. When you said you and your CFO have got this email so many times, I can absolutely tell you that whoever sent that email was not a very smart hacker. I'll tell you, if I were a hacker, what would I do for you, Tapan? Tapan, you're a very, very popular man. You're among the top voices of LinkedIn in 2019 and, you know, so, so many years. What I would do is I would, and, you, you, and, you know, it's not very difficult to actually track your, you know, where you're speaking, what sessions are you taking, right? It would be very, very simple where, you know, I would actually send an email to your CFO from the organizer of the last or, you know, saying that, look, Mr. CFO, I went to this event yesterday. It turned out very well. Looks like we'll get a lot of leads from there. I want a strategic partnership with them. And I've asked them for a pilot to be run between our Copcom's team and yourself. Uh, I'm copying my Copcom person, which will be a fake email ID, uh, and, and, and give a small transfer of 10 lakh rupees as a pilot project to be able to see, you know, what results they, you know, approve of. I've approved of a metric there. And, you know, why don't you go ahead and do that? I want to see the results within the next three days of what they can achieve. The odds of, you know, the person actually, you know, uh, doing the transfer or, you know, doing executing on what you would want uh, will go up exponentially, Tapan. And that, that's what a smart hacker would do. So I'm just saying, again, not to scare you by any means, but I'm just saying that it is, it is really so simple to do that. And, and most people would not even realize you know, I something happened. I am just praying to God that Sakit is on the other side, not, not on the other <laughs> side. We don't lose a lot of money. He is on the protection side, protecting people from getting hacked. No, Tapan, by the way, by the way, and I, I probably we didn't discuss this also in our in, in our uh, you know briefing for this. But you guys are our customers. We actually do your security. Yeah. So I'm just letting you know that you know it, it's all good. Don't worry about it. You've got the right people security. No, no. But you you are providing service to so many Fortune 500 companies also. No, I yeah. You're one of the yes, leading yes, service yes, provider. Yes. So that is a good one. But in some of the uh, big enterprise uh, organizations. What is one thing that you saw which really surprised you in terms of which got compromised or hacked without taking a name, if you can give some details, no? So it'll be interesting to know. In fact, I also have questions coming up from my liability head asking that, no, now what in the COVID era are the you know, cyber attacks that you're seeing? Because, no, I think I have some good insurer professionals also logged in. They're trying to figure out as what risks are there and what is that they look, should look for devising a cover or the cover is, is it good or not for them. Yes. <laughs> so you asked me two questions. The first yeah. one is a surprising hack. Let me talk to you in my career of a decade, uh, Tapan, the most surprising and the most sophisticated hack that I have ever come across in my life. Very interestingly, it happened in Pune. So uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. So there's a bank. We'll come to, you know, uh, it was public, so I can actually talk about it. This was the actual Cosmos Bank hack which happened. And not many people understand the sophistication of that attack. This happened in 11th August 2018, which is almost two years back now. And uh, what happened there was, the fun that, you know, we, they, the, the hackers were actually able to go ahead. And for years, they gathered the carding information or debit cards of a lot of Cosmos Bank users. 11th August 2018 was a Saturday. On a Saturday, between 120 minutes, around two hours, they did 15,000 transactions of withdrawing money from ATM networks around the world, to be more specific, 28 countries. And, and, and Tapan, look, you, you, have, you, you do global things also, and we all have global operations. Getting people in 28 countries on the same meeting of 120 minutes, we can imagine how big of a marathon exactly. that can be. Yes. You're talking about a breach which happened for these two hours, where there were 15,000 transactions in 28 countries withdrawing $10 million in cash. Now, this is not sophistication. This is easy. Now, let me come to what was sophisticated about it. 
the hackers were able to go ahead and actually own the the the, the atm switch and they were inside the atm network and not only on the switch side of the atm side but also on the banking software side where every time somebody did a swipe to take money out the money did not get deducted from your bank balance huh. so imagine the degree of impact and the degree of control they had on the system where you are taking money out and the money is not being deducted from your bank now this was still not enough this was 10 million dollars lost and the card authorities found that out stopped it immediately still 10 million dollars gone this was saturday evening they get into a war room on sunday what what's going on and that's a big amount of money and cosmos bank is actually one of the good cooperative banks which are there but still they got hacked badly monday morning tapan second hack happened where they had 1.4 million dollars lost using a swift transaction going into a bank account in hong kong and the money immediately getting withdrawn and dispersed from there the number of people who have been caught till date after 2 years and imagine how huge of an operation would this be has been zero and that is the and this is not a science fiction movie i mean this qualifies to be a science fiction movie you know which can be directed by anurag kashyap but 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 you know this is not and this is a fact and this is what happened in pune in a bank literally in the backyard uh, you know of, 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 of a lot of us and 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 we couldn't do anything about it so this was something very very surprising of the degree of access and as you said right cyber attacks like 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 those heart diseases where you don't know till a very long time so for how much time was the hackers within the network of the bank what all did they have access more importantly are they now out or not you don't know the answers to that and that makes it so scary the second piece post covid you said what are the attacks which are changing i would say we've seen a surge in the type of attacks because of work from home right because when people were working from their office they at least had some degree of control in their network in the environment which is there you had a dmz to actually differentiate between assets internally and outside which was there now there is no dmz right in most cases right you still try a vpn etc etc but even to come to a vpn you have to go through a router which is installed by an individual at their house right and that that can be anything you have a laptop which is being used by your kids your parents your, you know multiple things which are there so that becomes a very different thing therefore the world of cyber security is moving to a model tapan called zero trust what zero trust means is see earlier you used to have a network where laptops or servers or databases inside the network were the ones you could trust outside the network you would not trust in the last around 3 to 5 years in fact last year the most popular search term of cyber security in google was zero trust what zero trust basically means is you don't trust anything whether it's in inside whether it's outside your network it doesn't matter so the point i'm making there is that you know that's where the world is going the attacks sophisticated attacks coming in spear phishing coming in i do know of you know the, of groups investing heavily not just in defensive but even offensive cyber security uh you know state sponsored etc etc so many of those hacks are happening so the point i'm trying to make there is that uh, i'm again i'm not trying to do any fear mongering here but i'm just talking about facts that i'm seeing on the ground and uh, you know this was a very interesting prediction uh, this was by a wired article that came in very recently it was a andy greenberg article incredible piece that i think everybody should read about which he basically said that you know the next big huge cyber hack that shakes the world is less than 6 months away so we had wanna cry we had not petia not petia had a report, recorded damage of 10 billion dollars and recorded is important because most of it was not recorded it's because you know most companies are not regulated you guys are because you're in financial services most other industries are not when it comes to reporting cyber hacks which are there and therefore you know it's it's a very it's it's, it's not a very good space to be in but at the same time that's an opportunity i know of companies and individuals this make this a differentiator or a competitive advantage while onboarding their customers saying hey we are one of the most secured companies out there because these are the you know precautions that we are taking and and this is what mers can so many other companies said tapan did i answer both of your questions amazing matlab um, it was more like going through a, 
a novel thriller no the way i would uh, look at it unbelievable the cosmos story and cosmos has been our uh, corporate agent for a long long time you know what happened and we had physically um, been there seen you no know, how how disturbing it could be and like you said nobody has been caught and across the world uh, this uh, happened or the personal story of jay besos you no know, personal photographs getting hacked or one day talking about still maybe it will be there the biggest attack is still coming i also somehow believe that sake not uh, not for any other reason but i believe that with all this work from home happening and this uh, covid you uh, know uh, forcing people to move digital very strong very fast without realizing how to take care of their systems and what not to do is actually going to lead to a huge um, attack and i i also agree to that point of view and 6 months 4 months 3 months has to be seen but one of the predictions is that it will happen no so two things yeah. which uh, yeah. are very very uh, I, i don't think the world is ready for it one we have seen this seen this pandemic covid has shown that no irrespective of how much billions you spent on your defense it, uh, the world is not ready for it second yeah. cyber also i somehow believe world does not see it as such a huge risk like people do not see pandemic as a huge risk no and that is yeah. the most customers yeah. didn't have a pandemic cover no i think people are ready and they don't understand what can happen but you're right saket uh, that may be a reality and it can be coming very very uh, soon but let us say if, if this is going to happen saket then what as an individual should i do matlab uh, if you or as an organization that we should do you know to ensure that we are able to secure ourselves because what you say is right i think a um, lot of people spoke about bill gates uh, speech when he gave on pandemic before it happened no that he could see it coming and that time nobody really you know uh, Took it very seriously, and today the world is struggling with it. But this point that you mentioned on a big cyber attack coming, I am somehow convinced that it is. So, what should we do next? So, firstly, I think you know, if I were to give a generic advice at a personal and an enterprise level, and you know this, Tapan, there are very very different ways of looking at things. But there are some common principles you can apply. for me the, the 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 number one rule is always something which is secured by design now what that means says that see when you walk in into a aircraft one of the first things that i mean of course now after a while we've taken security to a next level of an aircraft so we don't think about it but if you go like 10 years back 20 years back when there's still a lot of crashes happening and things around that right one of the key things that you would always look at is is the aircraft secured or not what model of the aircraft who's the manufacturer of the aircraft how sensitive are they about the security best practices that that needs to be followed right for example today as a consumer if you look at webex versus zoom versus microsoft teams right just the historical trend and i'm not implying which product is better than the other just the historical trend of number of breaches that have been reported for each one of them does speak about who takes the security of their platform more seriously historically zoom in the recent past especially has had far more number of zero day vulnerabilities reported on them using which not only your zoom sessions get hacked but also your own laptop the whole laptop the whole data which is running on your laptop can easily be stolen if you are running a particular version of zoom on your mac or your windows now such zero days it's not that it has not happened with a webex or microsoft teams in the past but you'll have to see how many of them have happened and in the recent past in the last 6 months in the last 12 months what has happened and then as a consumer take that call and why is that important is because when you start looking at security it just becomes a very very important piece to be i think there was and i think that awareness is starting to come i think there was this uh, there's this app called house party or i think house something you know which a lot of people were using on the house or doing their private parties right virtually of course and 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 there was this big widespread around the house party app is not safe they are they are they're taking the data out and i could suddenly see the ratings falling down and people actually saying that look i don't want to use it if it's actually taking my data the the funny thing is out there you don't need to rely on a expert or a you know or or a newspaper article or an instagram like simply go to settings privacy and go to which all apps are taking access to your sms to your picture to your location settings disable all of them when you don't need it 
I'll give a small example. Tapan, in this Instagram live, you remember in the beginning we were trying to connect, but it didn't connect. Yes. I'll tell you the reason why. When I clicked on join, it asked me that Instagram doesn't have an access to your camera or your microphone. When I said yes to both of them, the request got then enabled, but then we had to rejoin and we had to redo that because all my application on my phone, none of them have an access to my camera. I only enabled it right now when I wanted to start the conversation with you. Right after this, I will disable it. So, knowing what you know, uh, you know, knowing what permissions you are voluntarily giving is a very, very important aspect for your for your mobile phones. Having said that, it does not mean that you know if you say no to all the permissions, they can't see anything. Remember, your phone has an accelerometer. your gyroscope a um, proximity sensor right i mean all of these and many more sensors which are there operating systems don't take permission for that any app on your phone can take an access to your gyroscope and accelerometer using which they can any time find out whether you are in a car you are walking you are sitting down you are chatting you are on a live you know interaction like this it's very easy because you know the angle of the camera being calibrated and the speed at which the phone is moving are enough to attributes to say with more than 90% of certainty you know what are, what is the activity that you are doing so coming back i'm just trying to say the best practices and at the same time knowing that even after those best practices there will be some amount of information that the application sitting on your phone is taking at the same time for emails for personals one of a very 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 high recommendation is to have two factor authentication on for all your social media for all your you know devices for all your email i mean it's something which is a non negotiable i mean you need to do that because it reduces your probability of your email being breached by more than 95% one control 95% the impact so that's for the personal side of things on the enterprise side of things i would say taman and i mean obviously that is my area of expertise to be to to, to be very honest because that's what i've been doing with various companies around the world i would not say what are the controls to enable or buy a firewall or buy an antivirus because those are all like a cat and mouse game you know you can buy five things there'll be 50 more things by which you can be attacked i've seen the most important things are two folds in a large organization one is the awareness and the interest at the board and the ceo level of cyber security because if that is not there everything else falls down right because it's like the culture of a company right it needs to be owned by the leader of the organization cyber security is exactly like that right so number one the board and the ceo of the organization being very very sensitized and i've had ceos i've presented to i don't know probably 200 ceos last year Uh, i mean because i've had like one sessions of 15 20 ceos also in just because they are so worried i mean jamie diamond publicly last year said that my number one worry and he's a ceo of jp morgan chase who spends a billion dollars on cyber security he says my number one worry is cyber security well of course he didn't know corona virus back then but 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 that's what that's what that's what he said right and the second piece is having the right ceo in place who in most cases should be reporting to the board the ceo or the cfo or the cro in most cases not the cio because that gives you the independence and at the same time the ceo being an enabler or a business enabler not just a compliance guy who checks his boxes not just a guy who was an it admin you made him the ceo because you needed a ceo somebody who's been in security what most people don't realize is like a law, law field or accounting field you can get some generalist and make them a lawyer or your general counsel because you need a general counsel you need somebody who has got that experience of 10 15 20 years and then you need to elevate that person or get somebody from the outside to be able so i would say these two big chunks everything else getting the right team the right processes the right technology is a by product of having the right ceo and the board and the right ceo in place does that answer your question sir Amazing, Sagar. I think you really give a very, very comprehensive answer. CEO, I do not know if in our company the right place or not, but the CISO is, you no. Know? And and I'm happy listening to you because then I know that my company in the right hands is because you are protecting it from the cyber perspective. I saw a lot of um, the questions and comments come on the screen. One was saying, that, "Please record this. We want to hear the whole thing again," which I think is uh, right. We'll record it and put it in our social media because I think Sagar has really mentioned a very, very interesting point. The second comment which came in was that no. 
that if they disable then the app does not work so you heard what saket said he disables it when the app has to work he enables it only for that period and then he disables it again no so if that answers your question because you know as you rightly said if you don't disable it you're putting it all on for a long long time and that is um, allowing access to a lot of people which may not be required so i think the way the conversation is going saket we have to carry on for a long long time but there is a constraint of time you no know, at the end but let me just ask you one uh, uh, last uh, comment before we you know finish it um, off uh, saket uh, how much money do you think in in attacks cyber attacks has been lost uh, across the world in india let's say in the last two years time there was an estimate uh, you know first of all let's put it like this i need to divide that into two parts one is the recorded loss and the other is unrecorded loss because as i told you most companies don't re- report the losses that happen because they see that as a major reputational damage especially considering almost every company is taking the digital route that they have so, so so sorry are you there yeah so 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 the, when you take the digital route reporting a breach becomes a big problem uh, there was an estimate last year we crossed uh, i if i if i remember it correctly uh, i think the total impact was supposed to be north of uh, you know close to 100 billion dollars of impact that was recorded the non recorded impact i can assure you is much much larger uh, that is that is actually happening so the numbers are staggering uh, up and to be honest i have seen companies really go from champions and at the same time going even bankrupt and there are companies which they don't publicly say that but that a lot of it has to do with their competitors were snooping in on their big bids which were happening or they were snooping in into their ip and that happens cross country also where we've seen without naming countries they actually copy ip made being made in india being made in uh, us and actually get the exact same replica of that product at probably 20% or 40% the price and uh, it really becomes very difficult to compete in those things which are there so we've seen all of that happening the impact is only rising and the, as steve jobs says the future belongs to those who can see it today so i would say this is definitely one of those things that uh, across the spectrum personal professional enterprise uh, individual we need to be careful of and at the same time let has massive opportunities for anybody who wants to look at it like that So if I put it in Indian rupees, you're talking eight lakh crore lost. No, uh, yes. unbelievable is the amount of money get lost. Uh, have you yeah. ever lost money because cyber attack on you? <laughs> What a little spot. Well, uh, not that I know of. There is a saying, Tapan. <laughs> There's a saying in the world of cyber security. <laughs> There are only two types of people on the planet. One. who know that they've been attacked the other who don't in other <laughs> so so if i say i've never been attacked or i've never been hacked it will only talk about me being naive about you know what is potentially possible out there i would say i don't know of myself being attacked as of now and even if i am i would not be very surprised given the sophistication of a lot of dynamic stuff which is happening and if i am saying that tapan you can imagine the state of the rest of the industry yeah yeah the person with kind of information and knowledge that you have anbir sai i think we had a great time talking to you and lot of interesting uh, uh, information comments and by looking at uh, what people are writing i see that all of them are loving it i think you put things in the right perspective you have no uh, shown what has happened what can happen And the point you said either you have been attacked or you already attacked and you don't know about it no that is the point which is there so the points you mentioned in terms of your personal phone um, go to security remove access till you require it enterprise uh, look for a good ciso look for a good cover no and since still it can happen have a good insurance cover and uh, ensure that no you be happy be secure because like saket said i also strongly believe a huge attack is on the way because it's very natural when so many systems has got exposed you know because of the covid era and everybody accessing from wherever because they want business to run customer to serve i think security has got compromised somewhere it's like a fields day when you go to the migration of animals happening in africa uh, i think the lions have a field day they are able to kill and no pick up uh, as they want and they choose i think right now this is a state that we are in we are exposed ourselves so much that i think hackers will be having a field day So let us be safe. Let us be secure. Let's not take it lightly. It's a huge risk, 
and as mentioned by satish in the comment they mentioned in alliance today is rated as the biggest risk you know, in terms of all the risks that they look into it so thanks a lot saket brilliant uh, speaking to you really good all the best thank you very thank, much thank you for the opportunity tapan it's truly